video is actually a collaboration with a whole bunch of other YouTubers, and I'll have them listed below in the description box. But what we're going to talk about today is repurposing or reusing different items that you found items, so to speak, into craft or storage organization. Now, when I was contacted to be a part of this, I was like, oh, absolutely, this is right up my alley. I love to talk about stuff like this. Funny thing is that I've actually begun recording something along these, uh, this same topic probably a couple of months ago, I think it was. So I've still got the footage on that, so I'll be inserting it here and there. So I never finished filming it. Plus, when I looked at it to edit what I had, I was using my old camera. This is a new camera and it's so much clearer. The old camera did not do well, it does not do well indoors. So everything's grainy. So you'll maybe see the difference in quality. I don't know, <laughs> but I am happier with this camera. So I wanna start the whole thing off with my favorite recycled project ever. Um, well, I'll just tell you here. Now, on the inside of both of these doors is probably one of my most genius <laughs> inventions yet. And I say that in quotes because we know I'm not a genius. This is a piece of um, lattice board. And I came up with this idea probably about 20 something years ago. We had had it replaced on the front of our house. We had a raised porch and it was on the front. And so we had this extra stuff laying around and I don't know why this idea came to me and I have used it ever since. Basically what it is, is I take a hook and hook on top of the door and I hang the lattice work on that hook so it's strong enough, obviously, to hold a lot of weight. Now the key to this whole system are S-hooks and you can buy those anywhere at any home improvement center, Walmart, whatever. Just pick the size that you like. I use it to hang project bags. Or here are some of those Dollar Tree organizer basket things. Here are some, another organizer I bought from Dollar Tree years ago, and you have to have two S hooks to make that hang evenly. Some baskets have handles on them already, and you can just hang it on like that. And if you have a basket that doesn't have any holes in it like that, simply tie some ribbon on it, and it gives you the same effect. Down here at the bottom is a muffin tin. It was a silicone muffin tin that I did not enjoy working with in the kitchen. You had to put it on a cookie sheet. This comes in really handy for mixing paints or uh, melting crayons or any number of crafty item things you could do in that thing. So I keep that there. Kristen made that for me. Erin's Kristen. It's Bentley. Isn't it adorable? I'm a little partial to both the subject and the artist. These are Dollar Tree baskets that hang on the S-hooks. I obviously had some leftover S-hooks right here. But my little hammer, it just hangs directly onto the lattice board, which works great. So um, just different things that I need at a glance. Pencil, more S-hook, and uh, different things like that. So. Now, a few months ago, I actually took some pictures of some of my favorite ones, took them out of the drawers so that we could actually talk about them. So let, let's address those now. One of my all-time favorite storage items are Truvia containers or Stevia containers. It doesn't matter whether you buy the name brand or the store brand. They seem to all come in the same little containers. As a matter of fact, in this picture, you can see uh, Truvia, the name brand, is on the right, but the no-name kind is on the left, and it's pretty much the same exact container. Now, one of the things I like about it is that it's wide on the bottom, so it's a nice, stable container and doesn't tip over. But you'll notice that the bottom actually has an indentation that fits the smaller green top. So that makes them stackable, and I like that a lot. Now I use these to hold everything from jingle bells to wiggly eyes and buttons of all different shapes and sorts. So I love them, and I keep them on hand. I have a big box in my storage area where I keep extra things, because so, you never know when the, the need arises. You might need something, you just run down there, and you've got it. Now another thing that I think is pretty handy dandy is a medicine bottle. Now in the picture here you see tapestry needles. They can, these are the ones that are plastic and they came with different circular knitting machines that I have. I don't want to part with them just yet because if I give this machine to someone else I want to give them the, the needle that came with it, you know? And the other one has those special safety pin 
and I cannot remember the name of these safety pins, but here you can see a picture of them. They're kind of um, looped. They don't have that twisted loop in the bottom that a regular safety pin has. So this makes them especially good to use when you need to tag a knitted or crocheted item. They don't get caught in the fiber of the yarn. And every now and then I run across something that I think is just too cute to throw away. And in this case, it was a gift box from Harry and David. It had this tiny little jar of marmalade or something in it. Loved that jar and I held on to it for a couple of years because I felt like, I don't know, I just thought it was a great little bottle. And then lo and behold, an opportunity presented itself. Tiny little wiggly eyes fit in it well. And here you can see it compared to a medicine jar, a medicine bottle, and you can see how small it is. Now this is actually a magnetic pin holder. It's store-bought. There's nothing recycled about this. But I wanted more than one, and I thought to myself, hmm, what can I have that I can make to, be, to do the same thing? Well, this is a little metal box that Erin had given me. She decorated it with my name and that cute little sheep on it. And so by putting magnets in it, it actually just holds pins beautifully. Now this box, once upon a time, had a hinged top, but I have used it so much, I actually broke the hinges with, with much love and use. So um, I just put it down on the bottom and I keep it together and it works beautifully, just like the store-bought magnetic pin cushion, for lack of a better word. I also look for interesting boxes. This one, for example, came for uh, in one of those Harry and David type gift boxes, and, and it, was, it was beautiful. In this instance, I've got sewing machine needles in it. It's the perfect width, keeps them standing straight up. I can just kind of flip through them to get the size that I need. And this is some more sewing supplies. I cannot remember what specifically this little box was. It looks like I trimmed one of the sides off of it, not so beautifully, I might add. But notice this medicine bottle beside it. I keep this in my sewing drawer to hold old needles. When you need to throw away a needle, it, it's not a good idea just to throw it in the garbage because it's gonna poke a hole in the bag and you, know, you certainly don't want to stick anybody. So once it's full, I can just throw it away. This is a Velveeta cheese box, and this box happens to be approximately 15 years old because it's been that long since I've purchased Velveeta. At one time, I did not know that Velveeta was not real cheese, and I didn't realize that it was full of trans fats. So we haven't bought that in ages, but I still have a lot of the boxes because they're that good. They're really heavy and really sturdy, and I use them as drawer dividers, and I think they're fantastic but I still won't advocate buying Velveeta cheese. Now the table above me is actually the one where I do tutorials and things like that. I stand up here. So I've got a lot of room underneath here. I've also rigged this uh, extra plug system. <laughs> it's plugged in down here. And then I have it wired right here so I can easily access plugs for hot glue guns or in this case, I have my Kindle where I can watch YouTube videos or do something like that while I'm down here working. But what I'm down here to show you are these boxes. These are actually post office boxes. Something had been shipped to me in them. I spray painted the front black and then I put them inside these milk crates like this. This works beautifully for what I need it to. This has different patterns in it. Um, for the different types of patterns, you know, based on what it is, skirts, dresses, something like that. Then down here I have things like spray starch and uh, different types of adhesive or whatever. But what I have in here is actually more recyclable material that I find it comes in very, very handy. These are things like, um, bits and pieces of fabric, the scraps you have left over when you cut something out. Now I don't quilt, so I don't use tiny little bits of fabric like this, and I think a lot of people would have just small parts around if you do so. Most of the time it just gets thrown in the garbage, but I am a huge paper towel user. I have this thing about germs, and we can talk about this on another day, about how many germs are on a dishcloth and all kinds of stuff like that. But there's also dirty jobs that you have to do that you really need something you can throw away. Anything that involves grease or oil or, or very nasty things like pet throw up or something like that. By using scraps like this for different jobs, 
like that, you end up saving your paper towels. Were you going to throw it away anyway? If you were, then yes, use it for something like that. So in other words, I am uh, getting double duty out of what would normally be considered trash. I also keep things like this up in my makeup drawer. It's kind of handy for cleaning brushes and um, or I will even use it to wipe off makeup because if you don't use actual cleanser to get makeup off your hands, if you use just regular soap and then you go to wash it off, wipe it off on your white towel, regular soap just doesn't get makeup off the way it's supposed to, hence the importance of cleansers, right? So a lot of times I will use this and that kind of cuts down on the problems, uh, cuts down on the wear and tear of my white towels <laughs> by, by doing that. I'll also use these for cleaning. Uh, these can make a great disposable cleaning rag. Remember you're going to throw it away anyway, so why not clean with it something yucky like bathroom germs and then throw it away. And that way, double duty. I just use this in place of paper towels for a lot of things and that just saves on my use of paper towels. Am I making any sense here? Another good use of these stevia containers is to use it for your water when you're painting. You need to wash your brushes off. Because it's wider at the bottom, it's nice and stable so you don't have to worry about it tipping over or anything like that. It's also good for kids too. And while we're talking about painting, this is an egg container, you know, like um, organic eggs usually come in these plastic things. And this is wonderful for mixing paints in. It's also a really good idea when you have to split a bunch of paint between a large group of children. Everybody can have their own little containers. Now here's another thing that I use, I reuse in a different way. These are some makeup brushes. This happens to be by Estee Lauder and I don't like them as makeup brushes. But rather than throw them away, because they're, they're good in that the bristles don't fall out or anything like that, so I can use these for a thicker paintbrush, which I do like a lot. This happened to have come in a kit. This was another Estee Lauder brush, and I think it's supposed to be a blush brush or something, but I, I don't like it at all. But being nice and thick like that, you could actually cover a lot of surface and with a brush like this. So I save anything like this. Also if I buy a blush and it comes with those little cheap brushes, I'll save those as well. I just don't happen to have any handy right now to show you. And speaking of makeup brushes, this is supposed to be a powder brush. You're supposed to put like mineral foundation on with it and I do not like it. I, I, it's just very uncomfortable brush. I don't think it's a good one at all. So what I use this for is to dust in my craft room. This is fantastic for dusting things that where you need to kind of get down into the crevices. I use this a lot actually. Now I've backed you up a good bit because I want you to see these things on the wall. These are actually something from the garden center and I used to have this big empty wall in one of my other houses and I had to have something to hang over a couch and that's what I hung over there. And they have just traveled with me from house to house and I find different uses for them and they have landed in the craft room and it actually works very similarly to that lattice situation that I have over there. Now the wood on here is actually thicker so you can't just hang any old S hook on it so it doesn't work as well. But I found that these little inexpensive clothespins, I guess they are, from the Dollar Tree will let me clip some things on there. And here I can hang like my pinking shears and different things that are, are handy. This is actually what I'm using these days for tutorials. Uh, it's a on a little stand and it's up here, but you certainly don't need this to do tutorials. There's lots of different options and I give you two other versions besides the tripod in a couple other videos and I'll share those with you in the description box below. And spoiler alert, one of them involves repurposing other materials. Now I'm guessing that I'm going to turn off this camera and I'm going to think of about 42 more things that I think, oh, I should have showed that. Oh, what about that one? But Alas, I'm going to draw the line right here, but look down below in the description box below at my collaborators, my fellow YouTubers who are doing the same topic. I think it would be fascinating to see what each of us, uh, how we look at things in a different way. That's, that's fun to me. 
So as usual, thanks for watching and be kind to one another, even if you disagree on stuff. Talk soon. Bye.